And um, thank you for allowing me to present in this academy. Uh, it's a unique opportunity to share our experience on the ground. And then my presentation will uh, focus much more on the approach that Rwanda used to strengthen uh, the HMIS through DHS2 and improve the data quality. So um, like uh, other countries, many other countries, we went through the challenge of having the system that was really responding to the, uh, the needs of the, of the Minister of Health and the system by that time in before 20, 2000 and 2000, the system was not a web-based system. And uh, I remember by that time, the reporting rate was 60%. So imagine uh, taking a decision uh, on the 60% uh, completeness so you can obviously see that the data is not representative. So uh, that's when we started looking at uh, a web-based system that could be able to improve the reporting processes, but uh, also improve the, the completeness. So in, in 2011, we started the process of reviewing our reporting form because you know we could have not uh, managed to move to the web-based when uh, we still have uh, tools that were not harmonized and secondly we wanted to have one integrated reporting form and bringing up also the development of SOP to standardize the data collection to ensure that the, me the methods and interpretation of indicators across the facilities the same uh, and also uh, reducing the workload to the health facilities so those were the major uh, criteria that we used to review the reporting form so in 2012, we launched the web-based system, which was built on top of DHS2 platform, so, uh, DHS2. And uh, later in 2013, we developed different tools like indicator reference manual uh, and others. But uh, as soon as we started in 2011, we started with the standard operating procedures for data management and uh, for data quality assurance. So uh, in 2018, we kept on 2014. Sorry, we kept on integrating other system like uh, case-based system like ETB and others built on top of Tracker. Then 2018, we kept on strengthening the system uh, by integrating the WHO data quality apps and other packages. Um, uh, then what we did was. Uh, uh, coming up with these tools before we even engage or bring the web-based system in place which is the IT solution. So we developed the standard operating procedures for, for districts and the health facilities that, that governs the data management and reporting, data verification and validations. And we also reviewed the data collection tools like patient files, registers, and reporting forms. Then later, as I said, we also developed the indicator reference manual to ensure that everything is harmonized in terms of def indicator definitions and interpretations and common errors in interpreting some of indicators. So that was not only what we did, it was also to bring in some accountability kind of, but also sharing the, the, the publication of a new statistical booklet and also promoting the information use. So, uh, uh, you may ask yourself why why was why why was very important to have these tools standardized and why SOP developing this SOP one is that uh, we had a clear roles and responsibility at facility level I remember by in 2011 we used to blame some of the facilities that they are not reporting then they could ask you who was supposed to do it there was no clear roles and responsibility to know who is doing what at which level. Then another one was we identified that we have fragmentation of tools, many tools that uh, some of them were repetitive. You can imagine that Andrew, you write, you're writing Andrew in like uh, 30 registers and you're repeating the same name. So we said, no, we, it's better to harmonize the tools and ensure that someone writes, uh, if it's a case, you just write it once or two, two times, but not many times. And also systems, we had many systems that were fragmented, vertical ones. Then another gap that we had, this was uh, that uh, there was no standard data collection processes. So each facility used to just report the way they want. And this one was a gap. Another one was an clear definitions and many more. I will share these ones, then you can be able to read. So there was an urgent need to ensure that all of these are harmonized 
and it's standardized and we have like a standard operating procedure to ensure that everything is done in the same way and uh, the way we define our indicators and collecting them is the same way so you can believe uh, that uh, well when you are improving or harmonizing your processes in terms of data quality this is what you do so you are trying to move people from uh, the, this workload that you can see that people are, are dragged into the data and they spend much time just to collect data and they spend much time to keep uh, these papers so when we share that ensuring data quality what do we mean is ensuring that we reduce all these workloads to the health workers so that uh, data collection is simplified in a way that uh, it doesn't take a long time for the health workers um the sop what was the purpose of the sop uh, the purpose of the sop like data management standard operating procedure was to really um, clarify or highlight uh, across the facility the procedure for data collection what do you do when you are collecting the data then the procedure for data quality assurance what do you do to ensure that the data you're collecting from the from the registers is the same as what you are you are reporting in the electronic system so again was also to clarify on the health related records storage uh, most of the time they used to ask us how long are we going to keep these uh, facility registers all of these were supposed to be uh, clarified and also retention another one was data reporting uh, like putting in some timeline knowing that uh, if you're reporting on a monthly basis when do we say that the data is reported on time basis when do we say that the data is 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 reported uh, not reported on time basis so we had also part do we have also the chapter on the data sharing and the access and then release but also we have the analysis and dissemination on analysis and the dissemination we also added the key indicators that they have to analyze and measure their performance at facility level so all above chapters uh, they really uh, highlight the general principles uh, when it comes to data management then roles and responsibility it means that uh, if you have the, someone in charge of data management what is what is the role of the data manager what is the role of the chief nursing what is the role of the clinical director everyone have to have a role what is the role of the head of the facility so when everything is really well defined so from there you could be able to know who didn't do what he was supposed to do to ensure that data is reported on time so um, we also developed the data quality assessment SOP, which is standard operating procedure that have four chapters uh, that really uh, highlight the introduction. Why, why do we have this data quality assessment SOP? Then the overview of the data quality assessment process, then the data quality assessment procedures and data validation. Then again, uh, there's something that we always don't consider when it comes to assessment giving feedback which is the important part and debriefing so this sop really defines well how you do the overall assessment but and and an, an the way you give the feedback to the facility to ensure that they they also consider the improvement on what you have identified as gaps then uh, the the sop again highlights the appendices like a final report template we don't want people to invent like example of notification letter like if you are going to to visit the facility you don't have to write a letter the letter is there you only put the demo facility then the correction form in case you want to do some correction to ensure that we track the logs we have the correction form then the routine data quality tool assessment audit tool this was there before the WHO data quality app but now we are shifting towards the WHO data quality app Again, the data quality app also focuses on the general principle, as I said, and it also defines the roles and responsibility of each health staff to ensure that whoever is in the facility knows his, his role. Uh, then it details the, the procedures for each chapter. Um, what I, here is an example of what we have on the data quality uh, standard operating procedure or data management. First of all, it defines the type of reports that we have, responsible person to ensure that that report is, is, is submitted, reporting level, is it a central level, is it, uh, is it uh, district, then time frame, is it immediate, with, like disease surveillance, is it monthly, is it daily, is it weekly, so everything is defined, then from there, you can see the table on my right, 
uh, that uh, really defines the months that uh, it defines what they have to do on 25th up to 30th they have to ensure that they gather all registered together and ensure that no register is missing then first to fifth they have to report uh, this into the system and the system tracks uh, the reporting the reported data up to fifth as a, a report, the timely reporting then fifth to 15 the system is open for any data correction then 15 the system automatically blocks the data set so it means after 15 they cannot report anything into the system so at least this one gives them the the, the discipline to ensure that uh, uh, on each uh, provided uh, time frame uh, they are really using it to maximize the process that is done on that process at that time frame then when they know that the data set will not be open for for data to be entered any time uh, they also make this business to be serious so um, in SOPs and indicator reference manual, we tried to make it flexible to ensure that it also tracks some common errors that someone can, 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 can encounter. So we highlight them clearly on the reference manual and SOP also. Um, uh, as I said, we are also use the packages to ensure that we simplify the way of data visualization. And uh, the more you want people to use information and improve um, uh, and improve the improve the data, you ensure that uh, you have to ensure that the tools they're using are of good. Uh, they are simple to use and they are able to uh, to visualize the information that they want. So um, these are different programs that we have in modules so that we have in the system. There is a program related to routine clinical reports case-based data, which is ETB, AP tracker, now medical certification because of this. We have annual reports. We have daily flash reports in, from the hospital that are used by the health sector, to by the Ministry of Health to track the process, to track the daily update from the facility. We have disease surveillance. We have PBF, performance-based financing. We have a COVID module into the DHS2. Um, um, then uh, regarding the mechanism, I think many people they are really interested to 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 see what are the mechanisms that we use to, to ensure that the data is of good quality. We have different mechanisms, but I will high, highlight the major ones. Uh, the normal ones that we all familiar with is uh, the normal data quality checks, where we have what we call ISS integrated supportive supervision that we jointly work with the development partners and we take data from HMIS and we go down to the facilities to check if what they reported into HMIS is exactly the same as what they have in the source of data. So this is a centralized, this is, this is a central level data checking, which is ISS, Integrated Supportive Supervision. We have also the program specific data, data checking where they, they bring the head of the hospitals together because each hospital at least has 12 health centers. So when they come together, they give them feedback on the data. Then from there, they are able to check the, the, their data. So we have also validation rules in the system. We, do, we also promote the information use, the analysis and feedback from the central level, which is the HMI SIM. Then we have this data set locking and approval. Then we have the performance-based financing, which is also promote the data quality. So um, we also have the accreditations. Uh, it means the performance based is that uh, people uh, are really, are really um, uh, when, when they, they, we have like indicators on completeness and timeliness and these three indicators when they are, all of them, they are 100%, that's when they have the scoring of the PBF, which is performance based financing. Then accreditation is that uh, most of them, they struggle to ensure that uh, they get the, on the certain level when it comes to accreditation. Then we have decentralized uh, also data review, which is, the, which is the monthly data validation done by the facilities. So that one also is the additional part of uh, that data review and, and uh, an improvement of the data quality. So, um, uh, this is the example that uh, the, of the monthly data validation meetings from the facilities. You can see that they come together on monthly basis. Then um, 
they 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 review the tools that they have if whatever uh, tallies they made is exactly what is in the registers you can see that my people here they are on the registers checking you can see the other ones are just there they are presenting the data that have been uh, have been reported in the system to ensure that they validate before this the data set is locked then here they are also checking if exactly what they report is the same as what they have in the source of data so um, on the data use part, we also have the coordination meetings. Um, coordination meetings is the monthly meetings that uh, the district hospitals, because you know at each district hospital, they have the catchment area. So that catchment area comes together uh, to, to review what are the indicators, to check if they are really on track. So at least these coordination meetings on monthly basis also promotes the information use. We have also the DHMT quarterly meetings that uh, is done, bringing together the overall district with its catchment area health facilities. And uh, they have selected people to attend. They also use it to present uh, the, the health status on their catchment area. So all of this is towards to improve the information use, but also it also uh, contributes to, to the data quality. So we not only that, we also have at the central level, we have senior management meeting, uh, that also looks that uses the data. We also have development partners that uh, also look at uh, at uh, at data quality. All of that also contributes a lot on when it comes to quality data. So um, um, we we also use the global tools like many other countries because you know these tools have really brought a huge uh, change when it comes to data review and checking like the WHO data quality tool is a really a nice tool that uh, we have institutionalized in our standard operating procedures and also trained our people to use it because it's a tool that can be able to show you the outliers and it can be able to show you the, the inconsistencies uh, alongside uh, along your data when you try to analyze it uh, as a trend. So this is the example of, uh, of the WHO tool and some of the charts that we generate. So what we did is that uh, we um, thank you, Scott and Bob. We really worked with uh, Scott and Bob to ensure that uh, our teams, in me, I mean in Rwanda, they are trained to know how to use it. And uh, it was a collaboration between University of Oslo, WHO, and Ministry of Health. So the tool uh, for us to maximize its use, we reviewed in 2012, we reviewed our standard operating procedures to accommodate uh, some of the features of the tool and to ensure that it's also part of our, 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 our everyday life in the health facilities. So we, not only that, we've been working with the team, uh, I mean Scott and, the, and Bob uh, and the Minister of Health team to ensure that we have the dashboards that are able to allow people to monitor their, their completeness at facility level, to monitor the trend of the data over time and also this one, is a way of simplifying the visualization of data uh, on their fingertips. Um, not only that, but uh, also we, we, we uh, whenever I present this, people always ask me about sustainability to ensure that uh, uh, whoever we train is in place and nothing is compromised and we have like, a, a, we have a continuity uh, I, I, I think as part of, uh, that's why I like these academies. The academy approach is really a best way. It's a good framework to ensure that countries have the sustainability and they also have the continuity of these good uh, uh, interventions. Uh, like uh, in Rwanda, we've been really uh, hosting different academies before COVID. Uh, even we've been attending different academies. So what we did was like uh, having our people attending this kind of academies like Data Quality Academy, then uh, we, we used to maximize it, uh, like ensuring that at least at each program, we have a maximum number of people that are able to customize the DHS tool, that are able to configure the, uh, the data quality app, that are able to support the facilities. Uh, this one was also a motivation because, you know, uh, even if one person leaves the ministry or the facility, at least we are able to have someone that can be able to train the rest or can be able to replace uh, other teams. So 
uh, we uh, I could encourage countries to attend this kind of academies to gain skills because uh, the more you attend the academies, the more you gain skills of new futures, and the more you get some insight from the country stories. Um, not only that, um, uh, we as we've been really implementing these good initiatives, but uh, we were also having some constraint when it comes to trainings. And uh, the problem was that uh, we, we used to train because we have money of training, but we are looking forward to see how could we train based on the needs from the ground, not based on the funding available. So we thought about the e-learning and we said, let's come up with a way, a remote way to train people because the more we have new futures, the more we'll need to train people. The more we see that you have gaps, the more we need to train them. So we came up with e-learning uh, that uh, is now online. We Previously, we managed to train all health centers and district hospitals and district administration staff on the data quality processes. And uh, it was much more to ensure that the data quality app is well used. Then uh, our slogan is that uh, uh, it's time to move learning to people instead of moving people to, to learning. So um, you may ask what is the contribution of uh, this, this, uh, the, the, the quality data or having the web-based system in place or uh, not only having the web-based system but also using the DHS2 because you know, the more you, 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 you have it updated, you gain from many features that can really improve your quality data, your data quality, but again, also uh, raise the confidence of policymakers to use your data. So most of the contribution is on the policy and the strategic decisions, because you know we, we are lucky that uh, we have one integrate, integrated case management information system that collects all data. So it makes it to be used and trustable and used in planning, uh, program planning and management, resource management, capacity building, disease surveillance, because even disease surveillance you're using DHS2, uh, innovations and research and MRE. So um, even though I presented uh, some interventions around data quality, but we still have a long way to go because you know we are not where we want to be. We, still, we are still uh, promoting the information use because it's not at that level that we want. And because you know now we are focusing at facility because you know at the central level is good, but it's much better if we keep pushing people to facility and district level to use data instead of uh, us telling them that maybe malaria have increased. We are promoting now uh, another approach of having the information from them down to 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 uh, the bottom up. So um, again, we are really now installing different futures, WHO futures, to ensure that uh, we really maximize the use of these packages because most of them, they are developed based on the standards, on the, on the global standards. And you will know, like, because Rwanda uh, is also part of the, of, uh, of, the, of, the, of the global standards. So we, we are taking advantage of these global standards because most of them have been, uh, they have some uh, experts that have been really concentrating to ensure that they bring together information that may really help and uh, you countries may take advantage of. What I like is that uh, these packages are free and that makes us really to really uh, play with them and use them to really improve what we are doing in the countries. Then uh, definitely uh, having these futures in place, you have to consider building the capacity. And these are the future plans that we have to ensure that uh, at least we maintain what we have adopted, adapted and implemented across the facilities. So um, as I said, um, I, I wanted to show you, I don't know other countries for Rwanda. This is for Rwanda. You can see that even though we, we have all those, um, all those good uh, uh, interventions in place, but uh, we still have much more to do when it comes to analytical futures or favorite views. You can see that most of the users, they are using pivot tables. And uh, in the system, we don't have only pivot tables, we have dashboards. The dashboard is the black one. You can see it's still, it's still down. So we, we need to have people really using the dashboards, uh, visualizer, which is the chart, maps, and others that really promote the information use. 
So, but uh, we, we have already started this initiative with Universal of Oslo, finding out why people like to use pivot table than other futures. That's why we can see that there are many futures that are being released based on the, on the field uh, feedback. So uh, without taking long, uh, these are the links where I can share the link, but uh, on my PowerPoint, you have the link where you can be able to access all these tools, the SOP, the reporting form, the metadata dictionary, which is the indicator reference manual, the annual statistical booklet that can be able to show you what we are reporting and the template. The list of health facilities can also be found on the website. So um, thank you. Uh, let's, let's keep the better information, better decision and better health. Uh, this is the end of my presentations. Uh, you're welcome, Scott, to take over and guide us to the next step. Thank you. Great. No, thank you so much, Andrew. Able to measure the data quality improvement or the data use improvement over time? Or how have you been able to monitor that? Um, okay, thank you. Um, we, uh, first of all, we, we, we have different articles that I will share that manage to measure different indicators. Uh, more specifically, we've been working with partners in health, but also we have that assessment that we do, which is the ISS. When you look at the measurements, you can see, because we know we have the ranging of the score, that uh, when it's 5%, we, if the error is around 0 to 5%, that one is okay. But if the error is above 5%, uh, that one means that we need to put much efforts to ensure that we reduce the, 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 the margin of error. So uh, when you look at the, uh, the results from the ground and uh, the study that have been done, you can see that uh, the, the, the data quality is pretty good when it comes to, to, to our data that we collect from, from Rwanda. But again, you know, it's, it's, it depends on some indicators. There are some indicators that when you take them, those ones that are not much more used, they may be lagging behind, but the key indicators really have over 90, 95% of quality. Great, okay, thank you. Um, a couple of additional questions. What was the process that you all went through to develop these data quality standard operating procedures? And, and how have you been able to, to implement them? You talked a little bit about the remote training, but um, maybe you just give a little bit more clarity on the standard operating procedures, how they were developed and how you implement them in practice. Um, um, I think it was my second, that, that is a good question. First of all, before you develop even the standard operating procedures, you have to understand your gaps and uh, you have to understand what you do want to address. Remember that in 2011, it was the whole year of preparations. So we've been really understanding the gaps that we had. And uh, we already had that uh, the reporting rate was 60%. So we wanted to improve the reporting rate and the completeness. So from there, we identified different gaps. One was that uh, the reason why people are not reporting is that they don't know the role and their responsibility. So we said we need to come up with something that really defines what does Andrew have to do? What does another person have to do? What, that, what is it? What is the synergy between them? So all of that was also part of what we wanted to make sure that it's documented and the process of reporting. So again, it, we were also moving from a, um, um, a locally based system to a web based. A locally based system was, was a little bit tricky because by that time in 2011, before 2011, we were forced to go to each facility and install on individual uh, uh, computers. But now it was way better. So we were, we were also forced to ensure that whatever that will be accessible online, is it used the same way? Is it standardized? Reporting is the same. So that we, because we didn't have time to go and really and really train them uh, or mentor them at the facility. I remember one time before 2011, uh, there is one, I always give this example, there is one colleague of mine from one facility uh, that uh, you take eight hours of drive, eight hours drive from that facility. 
he came with uh, like a flash drive with a, a backup that I have to restore in the server. So at the time he was in in uh, in the MOH, I checked in the flash drive. The, there was no backup in the <laughs> kept there. So it was like the virus has really eaten the the backup. So the guy was forced to move again to the facility and come back again and go back again. You can understand the time wasted by that time. So from there, at least when you have a web-based system, you are lucky, but again, you have to ensure that you have everything standardized. Uh, regarding training our team, we really did the, because it was the first web-based system that we had in the country regarding the health management information system, we were forced to really uh, uh, use the training of trainers, which is the TOT, and again, use the training of trainers to ensure that we reach everyone in the country and we transmit the same message. So that is what we did. But uh, maybe currently we have many ways that it can be done, but that's how, what we did. So the SOP was much more to address the gaps to identify it and to ensure that we standardize everything regarding the data management ver verification and others. Because mm -hmm. even users used to ask us, you are telling us to verify the data, how? Then you could try to tell them do A, B, C, D, but your colleague could also say this different way to do it. Then when you go down to evaluate, because we have the ISS, what ISS does, which is standard operating procedure, it go no sorry ISS integrated supporting supervision. What they do, they go down to assess what we documented in our SOP. Is it implemented? So by that time, they, we used to go down, and you are not able to see what to evaluate. So we said, no, let's have a standard that we can even go down and evaluate. If we say that people have to have a meeting once a month, is it done? They have to have a, a report documented. Is it documented? Those are kind of things that we wanted to have in place to have evidence-based, not uh, theory-based. I don't know if I answered your question. No, you did, and you and I think that the clarification on how you actually go down and, and validate or verify what is actually be, the end, the standard operating procedures is a really good critical step. You know, I think uh, from all of the case studies that have been presented, I think hopefully one of the very clear messages is that standard operating procedures are absolutely necessary. And you've even taken it a step further by having a process to actually verify if the standard operating procedure is being followed. So that's a uh, I think that's really. Uh, really interesting. We have time for a couple more questions and they are coming in actually quite uh, quickly now. Um, one question is they are curious on uh, how data quality is done uh, with the facility staff. Uh, do you call them into one place? Is there a meeting or, you know, just what is the, the standard operating procedure for the actual facility staff for them to conduct data quality checks? Um, uh, thank you, Scott. Uh, that is a good question uh, again. So um, what we did, uh, we have uh, two ways. One is that uh, we already have uh, the data checks that is documented in our, our SOP, which requires certain group of people, like uh, if it's a hospital, we require the chief nursing, the clinical director, the data manager, the m and &E, and some people in the services who records the data to come together and review the data before they report them into HMIs. And this one is done either before fifth, because fifth is when we say that they have reported on timely basis, but we give them at least 15 days. It means from first to 15th, they have to undergo that process. So at least within those 15 days, they have to sit down those key people I mentioned. And I have even, I've even shown the picture and they review. Reviewing means they bring the register and check if what they they really counted is the same as what they reported. So, but again, after that meeting, they have what we call coordination meeting. The coordination meeting is the same as the previous meeting, only that the previous meeting focuses on the quality of data, checking if there's anything that you reported wrongly. But the coordination meeting is the catchment area meeting where they, it, it brings together with the health center in that catchment area. Then what they do is that uh, the m and &E at the hospital presents the key indicators saying that, for example, that we had three maternal deaths uh, maybe last month and the first month it was one maternal death. Then they may ask some people in the maternity why it happened. Then they have to explain. Then when they're explaining, 
they take some actions. Those actions, at least they may say, we have to improve their case management in maternity. We have to improve the way we treat, the way we, 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 we treat the mothers. We have to ensure that the ambulance, when they are going to transfer mother to their facility, uh, they, it doesn't take long. Those are the kind of actions, those are the kind of discussion that they take, discussion that they, they have. Then at the end of the day, they take also actions. At least those actions are on top of the real data that they took from the system. Again, in the case they reported the wrong number, you can understand that uh, someone in the maternity will say, no, we didn't have four, four, four maternal deaths. We only had one. So we, I need to understand where three are coming from. So those are kind of discussion that discuss. But again, it is uh, one is just improving the quality of data. The second one is improving both the information use, which is the actions. Then again, also checking if the what data says is what people think that they, they, have, they, have, they have in their services. So um, I think that is what I could say that we have. But again, as you said, Scott, uh, whatever that is written in, in SOP is evaluated after six months. So each six months, we go down, which is the ISS, Integrated Support and Supervision with Development Partners. Do, then we check if they are really implementing what is written in the SOP. At least that one makes them to really make sure that uh, whatever we have in the SOP is implemented and is used. And also we ensure that the SOP also defines well those kind of meetings of data checks and what they have to check and who chairs the meeting. If the person who chairs the meeting is not around, who replaces that person? After the meeting, where how is the the, you have seen that we have appendixes of the report, the type of the report that they have to document, what actions that they have to take, how they have to conduct the next meeting by reviewing the previous actions. Those are things that we, we manage to document well to ensure that it's, it also guides the facilities. Thank you. Great, that's, that's very, very clear. Thank you, Andrew. We have time for one more question. And I think um, the question is how, what is your experience in sharing data with stakeholders, maybe implementing partners, NGOs? How do you regulate the number of data managers in the system? And, and do you have any challenges with this? Yeah, um, that's a good question. That uh, it's a discussion everywhere that I've, I've really visited. So um, uh, for, the, for the facilities and district, it's by default. All of them, they have to have access and we give them access, it doesn't require anything because the data that they report is from their institutions. But uh, when it comes to development partners, we also have this mandate of ensuring the development partners are also part of the process that we undergo. So what we do is that uh, we in, in, uh, in HMIS, we have a focal person that uh, is assigned to each uh, development partner that ensures that whatever request they, they need is shared with them. So uh, for them, when like, if today we have a new NGO that coming to, to support the health sector, what they do, they just do uh, a request. They just do a request where you say that uh, I will be needing this data to monitor our interventions. So what we do, we also respond back and say, I mean, the Minister of Health responds back and say, we will be giving you this data. Please contact this, contact this focal person that will be ensuring that whatever data you need is on your disposal. It doesn't take long when you're going through the processes. So that's how we are doing it. But uh, currently, we are not giving access to everyone to have access in the system. We are ensuring that the access in the system is limited but uh, in a way that we are able to serve our, our stakeholders by assigning the, 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 the focal, focal person. But again, uh, without, uh, we are now developing the data warehouse, which is the, the portal that will be making some of the data to be uh, available to the partners. But again, we also have a mandate or obligations of ensuring that on annual basis, we publish the statistical booklet that really highlights all key indicators that anyone, a researcher or a, uh, a DP, which is the partners can be able to use when they are reviewing their interventions. Thank you. Okay, and uh, sorry, one last question here. I think it's a good question, one that I was wondering about myself. Is there any penalty or 
are there are there are in are there any rewards for actually following the SOPs, or if they're not actually following the SOPs, are there any penalties when you do the uh, the 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 actual like go into the field that which the ISS? Um, uh, that's a, another one. So what we did was uh, uh, in uh, linking together some of these mechanism or framework that we have uh, uh, accountability framework. Uh, I, I, I think um, for us, what we have in Rwanda is that each staff have what we call KPI, Key Performance Indicator. Uh, like if um, Andrew working in the facility, I have a Key Performance Indicator. And my Key Performance Indicator is linked to my TOR and what I have to deliver on daily basis. So that's one. And uh, we have some, uh, some portion of the, what we call PBF, performance-based financing, that is linked to, that, to, that, to my KPI, which is performance-based financing. But it's not only that, we have managed to, to link all those mechanisms that really promotes the good quality data or reporting to different mechanism. One is performance-based financing, where people are evaluated on quarterly basis based on different indicators. Like in data management, for us, we have like three indicators. Well, I mean for data quality, the completeness timelines and uh, complete timelines and the accuracy. All those three indicators are in performance-based financing. In the case one indicator is not well done, you get zero. So there is no tolerance. So it means they have to make sure that uh, all those key indicators uh, reported and uh, we really reported well. So if it's timeliness, you reported on time, 100%. If it's accuracy, at least you are in a range of 5%. If it's completeness, you're on range of uh, 100%. Then th that's when you get 100%. But if one of those is maybe 80 or 60, you get zero for everything. So you mean it means you have to make sure that everything is 100%. Another thing is that um, accreditation, we have managed to link also with accreditation. In accreditation, when you, they are trying to move facilities from level one to level two, level three, level four, they also review these tools. They have to check if you have SOP in the place. They have to check if you understand the chapters of SOP. They have to see if you undergo the process of what SOP says. They check different components, but also when it comes to data management, they check those areas. At least that one, when like me, I'm in a facility A, and I see that my components really made my facility to go in level two, it is also a motivation. Another one is, the, uh, we, is this way we are bringing the e-learning. They've been telling us that we train them, but we don't give them certificates. Now we are trying to keep the database that also uh, highlights who were trained in the specific period of time, but also they get certificate. So those are things that really motivate the facilities interlinked frameworks that are in place that motivates the facilities. And as you go on, people start uh, having the, the attitude of doing it themselves. Uh, maybe one time when you visit us, you will see that when it comes to first and fifth, when you go to facility, everyone will not will be telling you oh we are late to report they will be really rushing to ensure that they report on time and they ensure that everything is really accurate because you know on a quarterly basis and six months uh, there are team of people that will go down to check if what they reported is the same as what they have and another thing is that after the iss which is integrated supportive supervision the report is the feedback is submitted officially is the minister who signs the feedback it means, imagine if I'm Andrew and I see the letter of the minister saying that uh, my department is not performing well. So they really make sure that the feedback comes when it's positive instead of coming when it's, it's negative. Another thing is that uh, we don't only report what they have done specifically, we also get the general feedback that can improve the system. So we say, well, generally we have find that people don't conduct maybe data, data validation meetings, so it becomes like a general feedback. That one also improves because you get your specific feedback, but I guess so you get the general feedback to, that we have found everywhere, but at least you make sure that next time it's not also you who is going to be uh, highlighted in the report. So I think those are the key things. We have other steps like development partners in their, in their, in their support area. They also conduct 
the self checks to ensure that people uh, understand how to check this data. We have districts that supervises lower levels. We have lower levels, the district hospitals that supervises the, 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 the health centers. And all of this is also documented in SOP. And we also go down and check if the hospitals really supervise their health centers. All those mechanisms that uh, brings in the supervision, accountability, roles, and responsibility contribute a lot when it comes to data quality. That's probably, that is the best uh, way to end the entire academy. Andrew, you actually have the honor of being the very last presentation in the, in the entire academy. And I think this is a really great one to end it on.